Hey guys, it's Summer with Grasshopper Luck. I'm going to do a few different parts of a tutorial about how to make these binders that um, I've been using for my smash books. So this is going to be the first part of a, um, a few different parts of the same tutorial. Um, it's kind of, it's not really a hard process, but it's, it's not a quick process. And, um, so I'm going to break it up in that way if it's a little easier to, to upload onto the computer. And also YouTube will not accept anything that's longer than a certain, certain length. So what I'm doing right here is just, um, I am taping the back of my chipboard. You can use chipboard of any shape, any size, however you want to do it. You can use binder clips of any shape, any size um, that you can find. The ones that I've been using are the Tim Holtz binder clips. This is what they look like. I've not seen them in stores. I had to buy them on um, Amazon and eBay. And from what I was what I was seeing when I got on there to buy them, I bought. I tried to buy about ten. I think 10 to 15 packages because there were not a whole lot left so I may have bought the remaining amount on there but anyway you can use those you can also um, use whatever other binder clips you can find but I did want to show you how to, how I've been making these binders it's very simple so what I just did is I, I taped the um, back of the chipboard I've already had it pre-cut and then um, I just taped it to a piece of cardstock. However you want your cardstock, whatever you want it to look like. Um, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut at a 90 degree angle um, all around the corners. And you want to be really um, aware of what you're cutting. You want to leave a teeny tiny bit of room between the cardstock. Um, and the chipboard. You don't want to leave too much because it would look, it would mess up the angles, but you also don't want to cut too close because if you cut too close then it'll leave, um, it'll leave room between the chipboard and so you just kind of have to, kind of trial and error is the way that I learned it, but um, just leave maybe an eighth of an inch and you should be about safe. I'm not really great with measurements, but that's that's what I'm guessing. The next step you're going to use, you're going to do, is to add tape again to the other side of the chipboard after you've cut those on each corner. And for this part, you really just need to um, put the tape around the edges. It's really not necessary at this point to go ahead and take the whole thing. However you want to do it's fine though. Um, I think that once you see this video and you get the basic idea you should be able to do it. But um, if it helps to do it like this the first time before you change anything then that's fine too. So I'm going to I'm going back through and what I'm doing is just using this pick. It's, you don't have to use a pick. It's just easier to pull up, pull apart this tape from from the um, from the bottom part of the tape. This is um, score tape, and I can show you what it looks like, but it doesn't actually have the name of it on there. It's just score tape. If you get on Amazon or um, any scrapbook stores, not usually like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, but any scrapbook store should have them. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just fold these over. Now, when you fold over the edges, there's two things that you need to really think about when you do this. Okay. You want to fold top and bottom or right and left first. You don't want to go in a circular order. You really want to go top and bottom first, or you can start with the right and then go to the left. Um, it just, because of the way that it over overlaps, you just want to make sure that you do in that order. Another thing that you should do is when you fold it, you don't just want to take it from here and fold it. Um, the best way to do it is to start and just kind of put it down on the edge here and then roll it. 
because some of the paper, especially if it's like this where it's got the foil on it, or if definitely if it's got glitter on it, um, it can kind of tear apart a little bit if you're not careful. So the best way to do is if you roll it like this, it gives it a it gives it a chance to kind of slowly fit around the sides of the, the edges of the chipboard. And the thicker the chipboard, the more time you need to spend using them. Now this is medium weight um, chipboard, so. Um, and this is the only kind that I currently have used. I've never used anything thicker. If it's thicker, I would think you would want to definitely do more of that. But for this, you, it's really simple. Just roll it, stick it, and then once you're, once it's kind of stuck in the right direction, you just want to go back over all of these areas. Okay. So um, the next and final step to this is you want to have a piece of paper now I had had that pre-cut but you never really know exactly what size you're going to need it cut so I'm going to trim off about a quarter of an inch um, maybe a little more of this paper and then I'm going to come back and you just want to it, it doesn't have to be exactly right although you want it to kind of look like um, a piece of um, kind of a piece of cardstock framed a little bit by the, um, the outside part of the front of the book cover. So I'm doing the same thing as I did when I um, when I first put the paper on the shipboard using the same type of tape. It's really not necessary to put tons and tons of tape on here, but I like that and um, I just want to make sure that it gets the job done. So once again I'm going through here and I'm just picking apart, just pulling these pieces of paper off of the tape. To expose the other side of the adhesive and then I'm just going to go around like I always do with my cards and I'm going to make sure that if there's any tape that accidentally hangs over which is really easy to do especially when you're tearing the tape and, and not cutting it which a lot of times I start out cutting it and then I decide I get a little frustrated at that and so I decide to just tear it and that's the great thing about this tape it tears very easily and um, so you just want to make sure that there's no tape overhang because once you put it on onto the back of the book, it's not going to be really easy to um, to remove it. So once you've done that, you've got this taped on the side. You really just want to be very careful when you're lining this up. You want to have a pretty good idea of kind of where it needs to go before you even start laying it down. This tape, once it sticks, is not easy at all to lift up. So right now I have it, it's, it's set, but it's, um, I have not pushed it down. It would still be pretty hard to remove at this point. So I'm just picking it up and just looking at it, and it looks pretty even to me. It actually looks really good. So I'm going to leave it here, and now I'm going to go through, now that I've checked it and made sure that it's where I want it to be, I'm going to go and flatten this out. Now the combination of, um, of the cardstock that I used on this, I really love this. Um, it's from the Black Current stack and these are the two that I've made and they're going to be front and back of a binder and I just think they're great. I've done them exactly the same you can mix it up, you can put a different color on every single piece of this if you want. It's completely up to you. Um, but that's the basic method of how I make these binder front and backs. Now this is part one of a multiple part series on how to make this binder. So I just showed you how I make the covers. So you do that process twice. You want to do it for one cover and for the second cover. And then in the next video I'm going to show you how I um, I add another piece of cardstock and that's going to make the end part of the binder. So check back for the second part and thanks.